Hey everyone, my name is Vishal and this is going to be our part 19th of our Snowflake Zero to Hero series. In this video, we will explore the concept of external table. Just imagine you are throwing a huge party for your birthday or anniversary and you have got a fantastic playlist ready to go like just for your music and all. But instead of using your phone's music library, you have decided to play with the tunes from a friend's music collection. Now the catch is you do not want it to bring all their series player into your house, but you just want it to link to their collection using your own stereo system. In a simple word, you do not need to bring all the data into the snowflake, but whatever data is into the cloud system, you just can access it. Or in another word, we can say if my manager is trying to access or visualize the data, which is already uh, I do have in my data lake without importing the snowflake so that there should not be an extra storage cost for me. So for that purpose, I will be going for external table. So in simple word, a snowflake external table provide a unique way of accessing the data from files in external location without actually moving them into the snowflake. Those files can have on AWS S3, on Azure Data Lake or Google Cloud Studio. Now the metadata will be into the snowflake. So the snowflake is going to have the certain file level metadata, including file name, version identifier and related properties. But the actual data will be copied into the AWS S3 or in the data lake only. When I'm going to create an external table before that, we, we should have an external stage. That external stage we have already created in a part 15th or 16 when we try to put the, like extract the data from AWS S3 and GCS. Okay, so let's get started. How are we gonna create it? Uh, now, one more point, these tables are only the read only. You cannot actually perform any DML operation on it. However, we can create view on top of it. And also you can join against of any tables. I'm coming into my snowflake. I already have created one stage. Okay, so I'm sure if you have been following me, then you would be already having a couple of external stays. I'm going to use this S3 stays for that. I can just simply check it how many files I do have. Okay, I, I do have only one files. Okay, so I can create two um, like external table with the help with the two ways. Now, first is if I do not know about the schema or the structure, then I can simply go for it. And there you do not require to know the knowledge of your particular schema or the files. So in this case, I'm going to write create or replace external table and the external table name with location. And this is going to be your external stage. And then you can specify the file format. Now you can not only just going to uh, like uh, going to give the properties of the file format like this, but you can also list your, you can also mention your file format if you do have. So suppose if I'm going to create it now, my Excel table is created. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write select star from my ext table. I'm going to execute this one and I can see that I do have this value column. This value is going to be a variant column, which is going to store all the column in from the files into a single one only. Now you may need to extract it using the flatten or you would be just pointing to this particular column and then will be like storing this data into a into a different uh, table or different view. So for that, if you need to write select value dot C1 and then you can mention as a data type as ID Now look at this. This is something how you can extract the value. So C1, C2, C3 and 4. Now one more thing if you're going to see, I'm going to write C1 as a small. If I'm going to write it's a C as a capital, it is not going to give me any result. So make sure when you are trying to extract the, the data from the variant column, it is going to be case sensitive. So it should be a C in the small only. Okay, and you can bring any data. Now, if I'm trying to write C3, C4 or something, make sure it should be the same data type. 
otherwise it may throw an error so for me when i ex executed this where care it's giving me like it should be uh, city something but it's id uh, you can even rename it but one thing if you're going to notice this one it's giving you some half value why i'm going to uh, why i'm uh, i'm sure about it this is a half value because except this you see there is a note there you will not be seeing like uh, double quotes and other columns why because we were having a comma separated value within a column for that what you can do in this if i'm going to mention one our property field optionally and closed by and that way you can run it uh, field optionally i'm sure the spelling is correct if not i can simply just wait a second i can do right show file formats and i'll go into this in just data and i can yep the spelling is incorrect actually here so if i'm going to write field option in closed and now if i'm going to run the same command select value it is going to give me hyderabad ap so i'm sure you have already gone through with my file format video so no need to explain this that why did it happen now just imagine if i wanted to create a table with all the columns or so in this scenario you were not aware of how many columns you will be having or you were not aware with the schema or structure so you went for this way and it is directly going to re like uh, create the table at the runtime and you can specify all the column by columns however the second approach is you create your column okay so you have access of the file and then you can actually run your column like you can actually create a column like this so we have id season date team one team two so these are the all columns uh, with the data type and then you just need to extract like as value c1 c2 c3 and like that okay so i'm gonna create this one also let me query this table select star from second next table when i'm going to execute this this is going to give me value and other than value we do have all these columns which is available here this value is the variant you can see over here okay now in case i do not need this value column or also i wanted to know the file name like which file name is coming uh, what if there are five files or six files and you have created this file name then you can actually going to know this by the metadata okay so this is the metadata column which is extract which is basically stored within the stays and then you can fetch it through this external table this is how you can get it if you will be having multiple files name you can uh, extract from here okay so there are two ways to create it one without specifying the schema second uh, like uh, by specifying the schema okay now one important thing is you can even creating partition external table so that means a snowflake external table can be partitioned while creating using partition by clause based on the logical path that include you can even like uh, uh, partition based on the date based on the country or based on any of the uh, logic which you wanted to specify okay so after this partition we have two more parameters which you should look into it that one is auto refresh and second is pattern the auto refresh means if you are going to add any new file or going to update it snowflake will trigger auto refresh in this external table the second is pattern if i wanted to specify to create an external table on particular pattern or particular files then i will be giving a pattern or i will be mentioning the pattern in the external definitions 
So that is going to be a short, short uh, brief about the external table, how you're going to create and the important parameters. Now, if anyone is going to ask you the advantage and the disadvantage of external table, the first advantage is that it the Snowflake external table is allowing you to analyze the data or querying the data without moving data files from the external, st external stage or external location. So you're going to save time as well as the storage space. Okay, second example, second uh, example, uh, like advantage is it support query and join operations so that you can even join with the other tables and you can even create views or metalize view on top of it. Okay, but the thing is, you are actually uh, taking the data from the external location. So one thing is for sure that every time we are querying this data from the outside, then the query time will be higher. So the first disadvantage is when you are going to query the data from external table, it will be uh, slower than comparatively the internal table or the permanent table. Second is it is only the read only uh, object. So you cannot perform any DML operations. And the third thing, you have to have the external stays before configuring it. So you can, which can actually add a complexity to your system and uh, uh, which may require some additional configuration for it. Okay, so that's all it for this video. I hope you have liked it. If you have some questions, feel free to ask. Thank you so much.